there's five things you should know about why e-bikes tend to have fat tires. And those are... I don't know what they are. Just the who, what, where, oh. when. The who, what, when, where, why. Got it. Who, what, when, where, why. Who, what, <laughs> who, what, where, when, why. That's five. Where's your Bolton e-bike shirt? I don't know. Where's yours? Uh, that's better. Much better. What is a fat tire? Let me ask you this question. It's me this question. I'm gonna ask a question. How wide is a fat tire? A fat tire bike is this one, that one, and that one. And they range between 3.7 inches to five plus. It's almost like we rehearsed that. So I bet if you ask the average person who is riding a fat tire bike, they would have no idea what's considered a fat tire bike and what's not. It's like not like there's an official cutoff line, but generally speaking, I'd say above three and a half inches. Some people say 3.7, some people might say four, somewhere in that neighborhood to yes, over five inches. As an example, this is a four point, very nice. So this is a 4.5 inch tire. The other thing that changes is the rim. This is a very wide 100 millimeter. Now, if we come over to this bike, this is only about Vanna White movement in there. This is only about a 60 millimeter. I have seen some rims even bigger than that, but those are custom. So who actually made the fat tires? Am I supposed to answer this question? Now? Yes, I have a question. So doing a little bit of digging, multiple sources seem to cite the same two names, if you will. One is a person and one is a company. The person that comes up first is Mark Gronewald or Mark Gronewald, but he is basically attributed as somebody who was making fat tire bikes, and he is the one who actually coined the term fat tire. The second who was a bicycle company, Surly, and in 2005, they introduced the very first mass-produced fat bike, the Surly Pugsley. And I'll probably put a picture of that right here. Surly Pugsley. So now we know the who and the when. Next we have where, and I'm not gonna say where specifically were they invented, but where were they actually used? The first place was in? It was on a road trip in the snow. It was not on a road trip. They were first used in snowy, icy, cold conditions in areas where you needed a wider tire to float over the surface. In fact, a guy named Daniel Burton. Daniel Burton. Actually rode a fat bike to the South Pole. Wouldn't that be freezing cold? Yes, that would be very cold. Can you imagine riding to the South Pole? Me bike. I don't think I'll be doing a video on that. <laughs> I don't think so either. So does that cover our why fat tire bikes were No, also... that was the where, but we're not done yet. We gotta mention the desert. So where's why? Where's the desert? Not where is the desert. The other where is the fact that people were using fat tires in the desert to ride across sand, supposedly around the same time. So that covers why fat tire were invented in the first place. Yes, and that does kind of start into the why because they needed them for the terrain. I just dive into the downsides just slightly. What are the downsides? It's a good question. There are obviously some downsides, which would be weight. Fat tires obviously weigh a lot more, going to slow you down. At first, my thought is people thought fat tires were gonna be kind of like a fad or a niche product where it was only used in snow and sand. And then somebody decided to put them on an e-bike. And we don't really know who the very first person was, but one thing's for sure is that fat tire e-bikes over the last several years have taken off rather quickly. And I think that's because people realize that there are some other benefits. Do you know what any of those are? Are they more comfortable to ride? Ding, 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 we have a winner. Or as I said earlier, they're more luxurious to ride. More luxurious <laughs> we, to ride. We don't have to keep that in. 
<laughs> we're, we're, keeping keep that it, in. we're keeping it in now. I know what the demographics of my YouTube videos typically are, and you just have to ask yourself if you're watching this right now, are you somewhere between the ages of, say, 50 and 75? If you are, you are the average age of the person buying an e-bike. And the truth is, the number one thing is... They have a softer ride. They do. So even though the downside is weight, e-bikes are already usually a bit heavier than average. And the other downside is that in theory they might slow you down, but you have a motor, so who really cares if it's gonna slow you down? That just means you'll use, in theory, a little bit more battery power. But the advantage of having all of that extra traction and stability and the softer, more comfortable ride, I think, and obviously you think, because that's what you buy, is well worth it. Now one of the things we didn't mention yet is why are they softer, and that's because of the tire pressure. It might be a little hard to read on the sidewall here, but this says minimum of 5 PSI and a max of 30 PSI. 30 would typically feel like a flat tire on any other bicycle, but on fat tires, it's not uncommon to see maximum PSIs as low as 20. So you have a very large volume of air, but not a lot of pressure. So these are very soft, very smooth, very comfortable. They absorb a lot of these small bumps in the road. And when comfort is king, it just makes more sense. What are you doing over there? I was comparing. This is the Fox Bat that comes with 26 inch by 4 inch wide tires. This is the Sabre that also comes with 26 by 4 inch tires. And what if on occasion you decide you don't need that much comfort, you'd like something a little more maneuverable, a little bit lighter. Could you go away from fat tires on a fat tire bike? Of course you can. They're right here. Let's show them off. So this is also a Fox Bat. It's exactly the same bike as this one, but in a different color. But as you can see, it has 27 and a half by three inch wheels. So that means the rim diameter is actually a little bit bigger and the tire is narrower. So this is an optional wheel set. It's not an option on the bike when we ship it out but it's a wheel set you can buy separately. So if you wanna turn your fat tire bike into something slightly less than a fat tire bike on occasion, you can buy an additional wheel set and the wheel sets are interchangeable. So you could even have, for example, a summer set of tires and a winter set of tires. If you live in a snowy area and you want some tires that are really wide, maybe even they've got studs on them for ice, you could do that and then have a separate wheel set that is really simple to remove because this is a mid-drive bike. You've got a quick release in front and a quick release in the rear, making it really easy to swap the wheels completely out. So the Fox Fat and the Saber are really versatile because they can be a fat bike when you want them to be and more of a mountain bike style tire and wheel combination when you don't quite need it. If you like the comfort of the fat tires, but you like the agility of the narrower tires, just get a suspension seat post and still have the comfort that you're looking for. And we'll link that video. It's right there. Just go right there to watch that video.